What's up guys, it's Dorian. I'm going to go over today installing Scion Linux, show you some of the features. Any links that I put up here uh, are going to be in the description, so scroll down to that, click on that. Uh, first of all, to get it, you go to sourceforge.net slash project slash Scion Linux, and you can click the download button here, which, which, which will download the newest version, or you can go to the files tab, releases, testing, and download Scion 18.1.1. I just uploaded this yesterday with a couple little improvements here and there. And also in this page, you can click on discussions and there's some little forums. You can ask questions. You can see what's new. I also have a, a blog section and you can create tickets and whatnot. I don't know how much use this page is actually gonna get, but what's new Biggest thing is I've got a repo working now where I can put my own software and update it from there so you guys don't have to keep downloading the ISO. If you need help figuring out how to get the ISO onto a USB stick, I'll put this other link, which is my how to install Linux and show you how to get it, the ISO onto a stick and you can boot it from there. So in this example, I'm going to use a virtual machine which you can also use to test it out first if you want, or you can just boot into the live version and you can test it out. And it won't actually install anything unless you choose to install it. So for the virtual machine, there's only one thing that I really noticed makes a difference, and I'm not sure why. On the display tab, make sure you have enable 3D acceleration checked off. For some reason, when this wasn't checked off, it didn't really show up properly. But this is just a virtual machine, so it's there's no problem on actual hardware and then for storage i made an 80 gig virtual drive and then for the cd choose the iso that you downloaded and then just boot it up now this is also what you're going to see on your live system uh, you have boot live system and boot system installer and then you have safe graphics mode and debug mode which or i'm not going to cover right now so I'll go in and show you the boot live system first. Now you'll notice it doesn't go completely full screen. Even if you have it like this in a virtual machine, it doesn't. I'm going to change it. Um, but what you can do is do control F2. And by default on the live installation, the username is live and the password is password. Then you can do sudo system control restart lightdm.service. Password is password. And now you get a full screen. So what I'm probably going to do is add this to the next version so that it'll automatically do that in the background just in case it doesn't show up full screen. So this is now the live distribution. Nothing's being installed. You have live guest session and other. So live, password, and then we're in. So this is it. So what I've done is I've reworked the control panel. So it looks a little nicer. Uh, I still have some minor alignment things to do, but I'm just being picky. If this is installed on hardware, you'll also have a slider at the top here to adjust the brightness, which I'm going to add here uh, along with the volume control. Another thing that I added was this little leave thing at the bottom. It's still a work in progress. I'm gonna make it look a little nicer, but if you click off, it goes away. And you can cancel, log out, reboot, shut down. I just thought that was a lot nicer. And I'm also probably gonna reuse it to display different things, different messages or whatever, just a little pop-up. So another thing is the repo. So if you go into Synaptic and search for Scion, you can see there's a package called Scion CP. This is the control panel. So it includes the control panel that you saw as well as the, the leave menu that pops up here. Now this is of course just the beginning. This is the very first package that I've included in the new repo. And if you click on origin down here, you can see the repo is right here, repo.fury.io. So now as I update the 
control panel, add features and whatnot, it'll just get pushed out as a regular update and you don't have to keep re-downloading the ISO. So there's a couple things you could do if you want to make your life easier to do the actual installation once you're booted into the live system. Uh, start up Gparted, enter in your password, which is password on the live user. And here you can partition your drive. So if you already have an operating system, you can resize and move and make an empty uh, ext4 partition for Scion Linux to be installed on. So now I'm just going to shut it down. I'm shutting it down because instead of just rebooting because it automatically gets rid of the ISO and we want to boot into it so we can install. So this will be very similar if you're installing it on hardware. Boot system installer. And now we're at the installation process. So this is where you create your new user. Dorian, Dorian. Make sure the username is lowercase. Uh, I don't think it'll let you do uppercase. Now, even if you hold shift, it doesn't let you. Your password. Okay, new root password. It says optional, not recommended for Ubuntu, and that's true. You don't have to put it in. So whenever it's whenever it asks you for your root password, it's going to be the same one as your user. And the new host name, you can call it whatever you want. Probably Scion. Then hit next. And here's the partition settings. So this isn't the greatest, but a full blown installer is going to come much later. So here you're going to see your partitions. So it shows up as the bolded device and then the partitions inside of it. So if you've already created your partition and hopefully you labeled it, you can just click it, set your mount point, and then hit this arrow to make it so. I'm going to delete it and show you what an empty drive would look like. Uh, a completely empty drive won't even have this. It'll have this, just SDA. For some reason, you have to hit delete and then this will show up. So then you click on this, pick your size and hit the green arrow. So what you can do if you want multiple partitions, so let's change that to a four, create. So now we have one partition and now I can use the rest to create another. So now this can be the root and this can be home, but I'm not gonna do that either. I'm just showing you examples. So I'm gonna take up the whole space and we're gonna make it the root partition, ext4 file system, and hit the arrow. Done. Now you can see mount point, and it's gonna format it. The install grub to bootloader, uh, you can leave it on auto, especially if it's a virtual machine. If it's on hardware, um, you can choose where you want it to be. If you already have a Linux OS on it with grub, you can leave it disabled. But what you're gonna do is you're going to boot into your other Linux system and you're going to update Grub so that it detects Scion and it puts it in the Grub list. For now, I'll leave it on auto. Install using the following restore point, live image, and start. So now it's going to copy all the files to the partition. And now it's done, so just hit OK and it will restart automatically, but you don't have to wait. Hit reboot. Remove USB stick, or if it's a virtual machine, just hit enter and it reboots. So now you're just gonna have to log in with your regular username and password that you created during installation. So this time it booted in full screen. Don't know why, maybe because I already reset it. So your username will be the one that you set up and your password will be your password. Log in. And then you're good to go. If you want to create more users, you could go to the control panel, users and groups, and create your users or 
manage the groups for your users. You could change the account type of your user. You can go to your user privileges, say what it can do, what it can't do. Um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. As for installed software, uh, we've got our web browser, uh, Thunderbird and PC Man FM, but this is totally up to you if you want to use this or not. One thing that I did notice, as you can see, is that hidden folders are showing by default. It's something I messed up when I made the ISO, but just hit Control H to hide them. If you don't like PC Man FM, I like it because it has this applications browser. You can browse applications that way. But there's also under system tools, Thunar file manager. Some people prefer Thunar. It's totally up to you. Um, so you can just go into the dock here and keep in dock, move it up here, and then you can uncheck keep in dock for PC Man FM and close that. And there you go. So now you have Thunar there instead. Uh, the dock works like most docs do. You start up a new application and then you could just say keep in dock. And then that way when you close it, it's still there. Pretty easy. And it disappears when you go full screen. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I haven't included, I have a regular text editor and a, a code editor. I didn't include any office things. Um, I included a document viewer for PDF files. I had LibreOffice, but it's quite large and I feel that's up to the user if you want it or not. So you can always just install it afterwards through um, Synaptic or through uh, the terminal if you just wanted to do apt-get install LibreOffice, it's totally up to you. And I've added a whole bunch of different backgrounds to choose from. Uh, some really cool ones that I found that were freely available. So use whatever you want. If you want, if you don't like the login background, you can go to greeter settings, put in your password, and then just change the background image here. So these are all the background images. Unfortunately, it doesn't show previews. I think I'm going to add a little application that lets you browse as the same way as you would in here. But what you could do is go to change background. You hover the mouse over and it, it shows you Gua Foss. So yeah, you want that one to, your, to be your background for your login screen, just do it that way. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can change the themes in here. I like the Adwaita. Um, I picked some Meriwether fonts to make it look nice. The window border is Mercury, which I made myself, has little sort of animations and the colors match the file themes with the, uh, the green. And I also made a, a larger one. So if you want larger buttons, totally up to you. Or pick something completely different. I mean, do, do what you want with it. Um, and the icon theme, I of course, went with Arkmaya, which inherits Mocha. So this, this is my favorite theme. I think it looks really good. I tried to theme it all together. And another thing that I added, which some people like, some people don't, totally up to you, is the uh, X screensaver. Not everybody likes having a screensaver, so you can disable it if you want. A couple things I'm going to do is add a an ability to disable the touchpad on laptops because I know not everybody likes using the touchpads. And I also noticed there was an issue now and then for the network manager to sort of lock up when you close your computer, put it to sleep and you wake it up. It essentially looks like this, but if you're connected on Wi-Fi, it still looks like this. So you can't change your Wi-Fi settings or anything, but you are still online. I'm not sure how that popped up, but I will be um, adding a little script that basically just resets the applet when it wakes up. And lastly, for the, I'll make this large, for the um, kernel, 
I'm using 4.4.0-112 generic number 135, which has the patches for the Meltdown and Spectre. I'm going to look into going to 4.10 or 4.13 or 14. I'll see what I can do, uh, see how it works out, and that'll hopefully be in the next release. But for now, even though it's still kernel 4.4, it works great. It's still lightweight, nothing's broken, and those security patches are applied, so I'm happy with that. Feel free to try your own kernel versions if you want to experiment, and I'm going to look into putting in a newer kernel version in the next release. But for now, I find 4.4 works great. If you have any issues, please let me know on Twitter at Dorian.slash or on the SourceForge website. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or you'd like to leave some comments, I would really like to have some feedback on this, especially if you've actually tried it out. Uh, leave your comments in the comments section, or you can always tweet to me at dorian.slash or leave comments on SourceForge. Probably easier to leave in the comments of this video. And I will be adding some extra things in either some updates or in the next version where it's going to basically be a map included in the documents folder already for you that points to every single location where I've made changes and how I've customized everything. This is so if you're interested in making your own, you can basically just look at what I did and I will lay it all out exactly what I did and then you can just go from there. Well, I hope you give it a shot and I hope you enjoy. Um, I'm hoping it works great on older hardware especially. As always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, you enjoy my vlogs that I've been putting out and Scion and whatever. I'm putting a link to my Patreon down below and I appreciate the support whether it be through Patreon or just by liking and sharing and subscribing to my videos. Thank you for watching. Till next time, bash on.